The federal government has released new guidelines that must be met before schools would be allowed to open for academic activities. The government, through the Ministry of Education, had on March 19 ordered the closure of all tertiary institutions, secondary and primary schools nationwide following the outbreak of the coronavirus. The Minister of State for Education, Chukwe Meka Wajuba, had in June listed six conditions that must be met before schools would be reopened for academic activities. The rule include having one, hand washing facilities, two, body temperature checks, three, body disinfectants at all entry points to their major facilities, including the gates, hostels, classes, offices, four, the whole premises of each institution must be decontaminated, and five, maintenance of the highest level of eye hygiene. They are also advised to ensure social and physical distancing in class sizes and meeting spaces. Joining us now is Ronke Posh, a public affairs analyst. A pleasure to have you. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. Thank you very much. Um, these guidelines continue to raise a lot of questions. How realistic are they? Um, the guidelines for Nigeria, I do not believe that they're very realistic right now. Um, already as it is, even to get the children online to learn has been next to um, impossible. So now mandating that um, all the, the schools, both private and public, have all these measures in place, I do not believe that um, it is um, immediately possible. How effective will it be um, in cutting across all the different classes from pre-primary to secondary school um, when we know that children are naturally drawn together in play and learning when they uh, converge in such places? Um, would we see maybe um, a relaxation of some of these guidelines, copying some of the things that are being done abroad where younger children are allowed to um, go to school without the necessary social distancing? Um, if even abroad, um, other countries, they still have a state of emergency. They've still had to send children back in France, in South Korea, and places around China as well. So even if the children have to social distance, um, it's not going to work, especially for the preschoolers. We also have um, teens that are very um, hormonal at the moment. They can't wait to see each other. So going to school, um, the social distance, how is it going to work when we have class sizes of one, between 100 in some cases to 300 in some cases? Where are they going to put the children if they're supposed to social distance um, and, the, and the measurement is there for the, for the children? It's never going to be able to, to work. Um, uh, just the other day, that was yesterday, uh, we understood that a private school owner is currently on the run because he was uh, organizing extra moral classes for his students. Um, he's being uh, searched for uh, by the Ministry of Education in Equity State. Um, what do you uh, foresee could have preempted uh, this uh, school owner to go ahead and open up in spite of a direct order from the government not to do so? Well, he's not going to be the only one, unfortunately, because um, people are in a dire state. They are very, very, um, they're just poor at the moment. People need money. Uh, school owners need money. They haven't paid salaries. Some haven't paid salaries since February. March, April, May, June. So they need a lot of money. The pressure is on. So they're cutting corners. They're breaking the law. They shouldn't. But it's happening all around. We hear it dotted around. So um, <laughs> it's, it's just what it is. People yeah, are but, doing but, things but, but, that they I, I heard, I heard, um, I can't be very specific now, but there was a news piece about a chairman confirming that the federal government has agreed to help offset the salaries of teachers in private schools for the duration that the schools are closed. Um, have you heard the same information? I've heard the information, um, but the first thing I looked at was the source of the information. I didn't believe it, number one. And then we have um, the, um, people like the Loma um, that sweep the streets. They haven't been paid. They've been protesting. I'm not convinced that they would leave all those responsibilities and the, the private and the public schools to pay for the, um, for the private schools. I'm not convinced. I don't believe it's true. I've not heard it in any credible, um, from any credible source. 
What, what, what worries you about uh, children who don't have access to even radio, which is the medium uh, we're using for education um, in recent times in Lagos and some other places as well as online? What worries you about these children who are in really hinderlands, the rural communities, and the effect this lockdown and the continued closure of schools are have, is having on their um, education cycle? Um, there will continue to be a, a knowledge gap. Already there, was, there were already challenges. So the knowledge gap is going to continue. There are stages of development in a child and there are certain milestones that the child is supposed to hit. And as they continue to stay at home, um, and they're not doing anything, they're not, not doing anything at home, by the way, because people are saying children are home doing nothing. When children are left at home, they come up with all sorts of things. So some of them are getting into trouble, some of them are being sexually abused, and things are happening to the children at home. So um, the situation is just... Um, going to be from bad to worse. They need to be engaged in one capacity or the other. If it means that they had dropped, they are given um, um, packs, learning packs, that they need to pick up from schools at certain times. Whatever it is that we can do to reach those children. It's happening all around the world. It's not convenient, but we need to ensure that there's continuity in their learning. You, you are a school owner. Uh, what would you advise, uh, considering everything we've been through, and you rightly acknowledge this is a novel situation uh, globally, what would you suggest to the government as measures to take during this period uh, to ensure that our education system doesn't go fallow? Um, the, the only way that it's really going to work is if we really prioritize online learning at this time. Sending the children back to school is not going to work. We need to prioritize online learning. When it's time for the children to pay for their wire, can pay for exams, they can pay by every possible means. They can pay by their phones, they can pay on everywhere. Things I've not heard before, they have means of paying. But when it comes to having functional online platforms for children to learn, it seems to be a challenge. And yesterday, I was so happy to read uh, from about slums to school and who Microsoft has supported, and they've been able to send 948 children um, to school online. These are children in the slums. If that is happening, then what excuse do we have as the government? What excuse do we have? It is possible. This thing is possible. We just need to prioritize it. Yeah, just before I let you go, I need your quick thoughts on the conflicting position between the Minister of State and the Minister of Education education when it comes to the reopening of school. At one point, we had the Minister of State say, we're opening schools for the graduating classes. And then the minister comes and says, no, we're not opening schools, not yet. What worries you about this seeming conflict between uh, the ministry or misinformation, uh, so to speak? It's very con concerning because already as it is, we've been looking for direction. Many schools have been looking for direction. So when the um, leadership appear to be um, um, it, it, there's division amongst the leadership, then what hope does the rest of the country have? So they need to collaborate, they need to be working together so that we can follow their instructions, so that we can work together. They need to also speak to um, school owners um, on different bodies and different associations so that we can come to a very reasonable solution. We don't want to see our leaders doing um, not being in unity, not leading together. So there's a challenge there. It doesn't look very pretty. All right. Thank you very much. Um, Ronke Posh for your um, Thank you so much. contribution this morning. It's appreciated. Thank you. Have a good day. You too.